darkness and winter freeze slowly progress into spring. Life starts to emerge at Canada's racetracks. Every year begins the same way. Teams spend month after month over the long winter building and preparing their arsenal of racing machines. They agonize over every detail and eagerly await the day when they learn whether their hard work has paid off. This is the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Year in Review, powered by Mopar. I'm Dave Moody, and for the next hour, we'll look back at another thrilling season at the pinnacle of stock car racing in Canada. In 2015, Canada's greatest stock car drivers seized it at every turn and gave fans one of the most thrilling seasons of homegrown racing this country has ever known. Records were broken, young talents emerged, new winners were crowned. The final event saw three of Canada's finest racing veterans throw down for this country's most coveted motorsports title. This year, that first chance arrived at the season opening event at the iconic 10-turn, 3.9-kilometer Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, located in the lush hills of Clarington, Ontario. The first rookie to make a statement was Gary Clute, the 22-year-old second-generation racer from Halton Hills, Ontario, turned heads right away by putting the 59 car on pole at Mosport in just his seventh NASCAR start. Clute showed tremendous confidence in the abilities of both his team and himself. His speed and swagger kept his CTL Chevy up front for the first 11 laps. The old most sport circuit is one that demands respect. To succeed, one must be patient. Mossport's a very uh, fast racetrack. Um, your car has to be right, has to be bang on. It's challenging. It's one of the toughest places I think we race at. And the more laps you have there, I think the better you are. And just when you think you got the place figured out, it can reach up and bite you. Soon after, a freight train of racing experience powered by Clute. Andrew Ranger and the Mopar muscle of his 27 car and the number 22 machine of Scott Steckley took charge. Ranger is no stranger to these twists and turns. The two-time NASCAR champion has scored 15 of his 19 wins on road courses, while three-time champion Steckley in his 98 starts has 16 wins all on ovals. A road course win has long been missing from Steckley's racing resume, and he set out on that May day to change that. This 200-kilometer affair is a game of strategy, all revolving around pit road tactics. Some pit early for track position, while others roll the dice and stick it out for a late race charge. In either case, it's the crews who go over the wall who earn and deserve the glory. The lead was exchanged numerous times between DJ Kennington, Jeff Lapsovich, and Andrew Ranger. But one team rolled the dice with a fuel-only game plan. Sophomore driver Matthew Skinnell in his number 56 Omvic Dodge held his own for a dozen or so laps and gave the youngster a well-deserved boost of confidence. It's awesome to go out there and be able to race with guys like Steckley and Kennington and Ranger and Dumoulin, all those guys. I mean, they're just they're phenomenal race car drivers. Still hungry for his first road course win, Steckley and his number 22 racing crew were in position late in the game to close the deal. The number 22 Canadian Tire Dodge never let up and hit his marks lap after lap. With the laps winding down, Andrew Ranger stepped up his charge. Soon, the familiar Mopar Blue was riding the back bumper of the race leader. With two turns to go, Ranger made his move. The moment where he opened the door, I just came on the inside of him. Yes, I hit him hard, but I never spun him. And uh, we came side by side in the last corner. And in my mind, I say, look, it's got to be like a dry graze. I came back to try to get around 10 as the best I could, uh, being out of shape as much as I was from the hit from him. And, and uh, obviously, the angle I went around 10 and the speed I was going, there was no way I was going to make it without hitting him. And uh, we hit, and I climbed over his left front tire, and that was the end of it. You got to do what you got to do to try to win a race. And that's what he did. And I definitely wasn't going to let him win the race after after that. Side by side through turn number 10, and they're going to make more contact. A big hit. Steckley doesn't even lift, takes the 27 in the outside wall. He's able to save it. He's going to get refired. And the win will go to the rookie. Gary Clute will come out on top. So my thoughts were literally check up, check up, check up, figure out where Steckley's going to go, 
He's going that way, look in my mirror, there's Lapsovich, get on it. You know, don't want to lose a race that's handed to you. His crew celebrated their surprise win while the Steckley and Ranger teams exchanged some heated words in pit lane. Trying to get a win. And look at this. Okay. Clute emerged victorious from his Chevrolet, ecstatic at his achievement. That was really cool. I couldn't believe it. It was just, it was awesome. First weekend, you know, the only thing we didn't do was lead the most laps. And for the fourth time in his career, Jeff Lapsovich finished second at his most sports stomping grounds. Joining Clute and Lapsovich on the podium was J.F. Dumoulin, who celebrated a great beginning to his first full season run in the NASCAR ranks. Coming up next, NASCAR celebrates a milestone while rewriting the record books. This is the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Year in Review, powered by Mopar, on your source for NASCAR in Canada, TSN.